Brock, how much are you going to be thinking about the ones that got away in this game? Yeah, um, you know, probably a lot. <laughs> um, but we got, you know, four days to get ready for this next game. But, yeah, um, in my eyes, you know, there's, there's a couple opportunities, obviously, out there that, you know, I missed um, in, in uh, terms of the deep ball and whatnot. So, um, but found a, found a way to win, so. Um, nah, it's just, you know, I just overthrew him, you know, on the one, the BA, the one, uh, Debo and then JJ on that, uh, third down. Um, yeah, it's just, those are on me. I gotta be better. I gotta hit him in stride and, and not overthrow him. Simple as that. I guess the, the obvious question is, does it matter when you're still trying to figure out the strength of your arm? Uh, no, no, I don't think so. You know, we fit those, um, you know, deep balls and whatnot at practice and everything. Um, it's just, you know, it comes down when the bullets are flying, being able to, Make an accurate throw, and um, you know, not overthrow them. Don't underthrow them, but just be on point. And so, um, you know, that's what you got to do as an NFL quarterback. And I take that on myself. Well, I'm sure it's always a point of emphasis to take care of the ball, but in a game like that, it's a division, you know, greedy type of game, does it take on added importance to make sure that you're not putting the ball in harm's way? Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. That it's a divisional game. Um, you know, there's a lot on the line for both teams, like, you know, you want to win. Um, it can be a four quarter game and really obviously today it came down to, you know, not turning the ball over. And so, um, we knew that going into it. And for myself, it's like, man, I got to make plays for my team, but at the same time, protect the ball more than anything, let our defense play. And, um, you know, at the end, see what happens where, where we got to be in the fourth quarter. But, um, that was the, that was the name of the game today. So at the, at the end of the first half, when you guys had, you know, some fast plays and you had to get rid of the ball to leave time on the clock. How much of that, just managing that situation, have you done in the past? And how do you feel about how uh, you engineered it so there was you know, one second left for the state? Yeah, um, I mean, I think when I first got here is, you know, the first time I got exposed to that in terms of, like, how Kyle thinks about two-minute drives. Obviously, you want to go down and score and get points on the board. But, you know, there's times where you don't need to do it as fast and so that you don't get the team, the other team the ball back to go do something as well. So. Um, obviously, we want to get first downs, move the chains, but you know, sort of get the clock rolling, and then uh, have an opportunity to you know score at the end. And so I feel like Kyle did a great job calling some plays early on in that drive, um, and then it timed out great to you know score with you know no points or no uh, seconds left. So it was good. Chris was just in here talking about the intent of the offensive line. Um, you had a couple plays where you're going through multiple where he's able to go down the field, and it's probably because you had time. What's the biggest difference you notice in guys like Aaron Banks and Spencer Burford from this year from last year? Yeah, they've done a great job, you know, all offseason, um, growing, watching film from last year where they could have gotten better. Um, and at the end of the day, man, their mindset is where it needs to be, like their dogs. You know, they, they come to, to practice every single day, ready to work, ready to grind uh, days out. And then, you know, we get into a game like this where it takes four quarters against, you know, guys like, you know, Aaron Donald, and they got some good guys on the edge to be able to, you know, know and hone in every single play what they're doing. And so, um, you know, credit to those guys, man. They've gotten a lot better. I'm excited to roll with them, you know, the rest of the year. And, um, you know, they gave me a great time. You know, there's multiple plays where I was able to go through reads and progressions and hit, you know, hit the number three guy and, and stuff like that. So um, I thought they did a great job in pass pro. Could you sense the momentum uh, going into halftime after scoring? Yeah, 100%. You know, they go down score, and then it's like, all right, we got, you know, two minutes or so left. Um, obviously, we want to score to get some momentum. But once we did and capitalized on it, it was like, okay, defense, you know, go out and, um, the first drive of the second half. Get stop, offense, let's roll. So everyone felt good about it. Um, but man, it's a team game. You know, defense gets, gets a stop, offense goes and score. Like, that's what it's about. So, um, you know, going in the second half, that was huge for us to be able to score. So. Maybe, maybe, you already, maybe you already had it down, but Jimmy was always really good with sneaks. Uh, did, you, did you pick up any tips from him last year on, on that front that you think made you better at that? I mean, we always, you know, try to figure it out. Like, what does Jimmy do so good with the QB sneak? Like, it's a question around. Um, you know, the team. And so, you know, he just, you know, found little creases and whatnot, but, you know, got his shoulder, uh, shoulder pads down and would find a way. So that was really about it. I don't think there's necessarily a secret to it or anything, at least as far as I know. But, um, you know, watching all the – we watched a lot of, you know, QB sneaks and stuff that Jimmy did well and what he did. So um, he did a good job with it, and I learned a couple of things. But he never really told me, but, yeah. Jimmy always claimed there was a secret. He didn't just – he didn't want to tell anybody. So he never even told you. No, I mean, nah, he just, <laughs> yeah, nah, but it's all good, man. He's, uh, I love Jim. I love Jim. Have you gotten better at, uh, you know, not obsessing over mistakes or do you feel like you probably won't be sticking over the first 
I feel like in the game, man, it's you know crucial to be able to move on and have a clean slate, clean state of mind. Obviously, yeah, learn and you know, all right, if they give me that look again, I got to do this or that better. But um, to dwell on it and and to you know obviously live in the past and beat yourself up on it, then I feel like that can hinder your game moving forward. So there's a fine line. I feel like when the game ends, it's like yeah, be hard on yourself, learn from it. But right then and there in the moment, you gotta you know, find a way to move on and play a clean game. Brock, so. Last one. Your teammates openly admitted, not disrespectfully, but they haven't heard a lot about a lot of these Rams guys. They're just kind of unrecognizable. Um, at the same time, you guys seem to, you know, to me and expect that type of game. Uh, why, why is that? Yeah, I mean, they're a good squad. I feel like those guys, you know, they, you know, a lot of them, you know, you don't know them, but they're they're on that team for a reason, man. You're playing in the NFL, you're on an NFL roster, you're good. And um, I feel like for those guys, man, they're trying to make a name for themselves. You know, they play hard for four quarters, and we knew that coming into the game that they're, we're going to get their best shot. And so, um, you know, credit to them. They did. I thought they did a great job. They play hard, and they play together. Um, it's going to be a defense, you know, moving forward that, you know, we got to obviously scheme up really well and be ready to play four quarters of. So respect to them. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Right here. We'll have Debo after him.